do a contract for America, for example, now? Because the minute you did, Trump would immediately attack it if it did not sufficiently endorse his big lie. You could never have mm. a Tea Party sort of grassroots uprising because the Republican grassroots is actually very divided over Trump and specifically whether or not to take the vaccine, which Trump is strongly in favor of and so many other Republicans are not. So you're seeing a Republican Party that is divided over Trump that is unable to coalesce and therefore is just kind of hoping to run out the clock on Joe Biden's low approval numbers. Hmm. Joe? Look, I think it's a, it's a lot worse than that, actually. I think, look, th there are not two parties in America anymore. The, the Republican Party is now an authoritarian movement, authoritarian party. And what happens in that kind of party uh, is ideas do not matter. Uh, merit doesn't matter. The The way you move up in a party like that, an authoritarian party, is proximity to dear leader and fealty to him. Um, and they, so what the parties become now are hostage takers uh, or hostages. Uh, the, 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 I mean, they're only, and we're down to like two, maybe three, maybe a handful that are not you can't put into that category. So, you know, what What I think is happening, or there will not be ideas. This this is a party that is in thrall with uh, its power, with trying to get its power back. And it is, it is owned uh, by tr Trump. He fuels it. And that's why, again, I agree, there can't be, they can't get there together because they're, they're arguing, there's no argument about who's in charge. And that's what we have to take on. I think the Democrat, all of us, have to build a, a huge, broad-based pro-democracy movement from the bottom up, a lot of activists, a lot of energy. Um, it's one of the reasons I've helped start uh, jointheunion.us with my friends at the Lincoln Project who I've joined, because we've all got to come together and beat back this authoritarian mm. movement. And that's what this election has to be about. We have to nationalize it and make it clear that the reason we're getting through COVID, the reason there are all these jobs that have been created is because of what Democrats did. The, the Republicans didn't vote for the COVID relief package, not one of them. So it, it, it would be much worse. As bad as things are, we need to keep, there's things we need to do. We've got to keep pushing Biden's advantage of what he has accomplished, what Democrats did, and define the Republican Party right. as an authoritarian well, movement that it, it is dragging us back. And both of you are referring to sort of what's just off stage, which is why, OK, if it looks what, like what McConnell's doing is sort of bad or not that effective, imagine how much worse it would be, as you say, Che, if they spent months developing something, put out a big rollout, do a big interview, and then have it scuttled by Trump that night, right? Um, and yet some people are clearly speaking from to, to adopt Joe's analogy uh, from a hostage room. Here was Lindsey Graham pleading for more policy. We need a positive agenda to talk about how we can fix the future for America, repair the damage, rather than trying to purge the party. I think the best thing for the Republican Party is to talk about policy. Jay? What policy? Uh, what policy could he possibly be referring to? I, I certainly don't see any potential policies. Uh, we had a Republican president, ostensibly a Republican president, Donald Trump, for four years. We had no policy. We had some tax cuts passed by Paul Ryan. We had some conservative judges approved by Mitch McConnell. That's it. That's not something you can really run upon. So I find it really rather ridiculous that Lindsey Graham says this. And then, you know, he also says, oh, you know, this party is going to be all about Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell better get on board with that. Otherwise, I'm not going to support him as Senate Majority Leader anymore. So it's completely confusing. It's all over the place. It's really scattershot. And I think also you have this backdrop of the fact that, yes, Biden's approval rings are low. But there are green shoots here. There are There is... Uh, there is really like the snowflakes are turning, going to turn into flowers a la Dr. Zivago pretty soon here, hopefully, because COVID is ebbing away. Uh, inflation appears to be ebbing away. I've there heard is some that real before, Che. I've heard about yeah. COVID fading before. Well, I think that Omicron is different. And I think the best indicator of that is Dr. Fauci. I mean, Dr. Fauci, uh, you know, when other people were saying COVID was going away, was much more circumspect. This time, he is talking much more about this becoming endemic 
and much more about the idea that this is going to be something that we right. can live with, particularly. Or, or to parry part of what you're saying, he has now evolved to a place of saying we've done as, as much vaccination as we can. The people who are resisting right. are still, they have human rights, they don't have to take it. And what's left is how many COVID restrictions are left. Those seem to be going away. Joe, I want to turn a little right. bit uh, to something that's somewhat complimentary of you. So you might, you might be here for it. But a lot of people talk about running bold campaigns, taking a stand. A lot of people care about uh, democracy and politics. You do have a, a pretty a unique position in, in this sort of period of a democratic history and really history of American foreign policy that I alluded to, um, because you guys did wage a campaign that was against where a lot of things were, and it did tilt over time. And it's complex what moves policy, but boy, was it a part of it. I think people agree with that, whether they love Howard Dean or not. Um, so let's take a quick look at a younger Joe Trippi when you were running that campaign against all odds. Here we go. Now we need to get and make sure that our message of standing up to Bush, of opposing this war, of repealing the tax cuts, of providing health care uh, coverage and a plan to get health care for every American is out there. It's been said that that campaign didn't win the primary, but it ultimately won the argument. Uh, are there any lessons there now for a Democratic Party that, as we've been exploring, has some open policy runway? Yeah, I, I think I, I actually think there's a lesson there for the country right now that we need to create that kind of argument, that kind of movement to take on what's really happening here uh, with the Republican Party that's become authoritarian. And that and what was great about that came, campaign was how we empowered people to engage. And yes, I think there are the Democratic Party is the only pro-democracy party left mm. in this country, unfortunately. I happen to believe we need two major parties that have debates about policy. It, it doesn't exist. We need, the, the Democratic Party needs to make the case that we've led this country through the most upheaval that we've all experienced in our lifetimes over the last two, two years. That yes, we, COVID has been, it, it has, you know, up, upset everybody. It hurt people. They're barely, a lot of people are barely making it through, but it would be far worse because we've been leading the way while the Republicans voted no, did nothing. They helped feed the conspiracy theories, the anti-vaxxers, the, the no mask uh, campaigns. Now, now they've got, uh, they're uh, rooting on the truckers trucker protest in Canada that's hurting auto workers in Alabama and Detroit, uh, which is going to make inflation worse. But but there are no ideas about how they would lower inflation. Biden actually does have a plan. Some of the things that he's been trying to do and get passed would actually impact impact inflation, get get people working families costs down. So I think we got to make that case. But I think fundamentally, Every American who cares about this democracy, forget about Democrats and Republicans, right versus left, for, put past differences aside and come together yeah. to stop this authoritarian movement. And again, I just want to repeat it. That's why at the Lincoln Project, we started Join the U.S., uh, join, excuse, join the union dot us. Well, Joe, we could get uh, you, really we could get you a T-shirt with the URL. You could wear it through the whole thing, the whole interview. <laughs> well, well, it worked. It worked for us a lot in uh, 2003. Uh, and it was. I think we did. I, I'm the running over on I time. People... I'm running over on time. But che, che was working for Kerry that year. But uh, it was a, it was quite the Internet campaign. The Dean won, Che. It was quite simply one of the most important campaigns in American history. Um, you know, it, it might be not enough for, for Joe, considering how it turned out. But if you think about <laughs> historically, the most important losers, Howard Dean, Barry Goldwater at the top of that list. They shaped history in an enormous way, more than a lot of winning campaigns have done. Well, and that really it aged me quite a bit. Did it age you? Well, yeah, it did look it looked mildly <laughs> slightly. You looked a year younger in the clip, but um, I gotta go. But it, it really wraps the whole convo together. Because